Today we are going to talk about writer's block. Hello friends. <laughs> I'm here repping my NaNoWriMo 2022 winner shirt. So writer's block is something that I have faced ever since I started writing back when I was like 12-ish. And if you've seen my history of my writing video, uh, technically it was before that. Over the past 10, 11 years, these are the things that I have learned that help me overcome those blocks and get past them and move towards the finish line of whatever writing project I'm working on. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Love you guys. Um, if you're into horror movies, check out my friend Connor's channel. Uh, I was just on there talking about the new Scream movie, and then also we watched Ready or Not with some of our other friends. Uh, so, very, very fun. Uh, I'll plug... Actually, it's up there. I always... my camera feed is mirrored, so... <laughs> it's up there. I'm gonna split this list into two sections. So the first section is fighting writer's block, uh, when you have it, like, in the moment, getting past it. And the second one is preventing future writer's block. These are little favors that you can do for yourself to help keep you out of sticky situations. So uh, tip number one, uh, get away from it for a bit. It always helps me to step away from my work for a bit and do something else, whether that's going for a little drive, taking a shower, or if I'm really stuck, um, I'll put on some music and lay on the floor and stare at the ceiling. And I know that that sounds silly, but like, it just helps me, like, to stare at the ceiling where there's nothing there and just listen to music and just think, you know, just think. And I'll have a notebook next to me uh, so I can, like, jot down whatever I think about. Or my phone and I can just, you know, plug it in. Taking a break is, I think, the first step. Just, like, take a little step back from it. Maybe you're burnt out um, and that's what is stopping you from making progress. It helps me a lot. I'll go for, like, a 20-30 minute drive. I'll go to Target and, like, walk around, shop a little bit, like, that kind of thing. And it just, like refreshes me. If you're burnout, it's totally okay to take a break. Take a few days off, um, but be thinking about your project in the back of your head to try to keep it fresh, because um, you don't want to completely forget everything you're working on, especially in the middle of a draft. That's kind of like the worst thing you can do. Uh, tip two, reread what you've already written. So this tip works best if you're in the middle of a writing project and get stuck somewhere along the way. Maybe you're like five or six chapters in and you're just like kind of losing steam a little bit. You don't know where to go next. Um, I recommend you just go back a couple chapters or even go back all the way to the beginning and just read through the things you've already written. You don't have to read the whole thing. Even if you do go all the way back to the beginning, maybe just read the first couple chapters to see like kind of where you started. Maybe there are things that you mentioned offhand that you could bring back around full circle at the point that you're at or things that you forgot you mentioned that you're like, oh, that like didn't make it into the outline. I should maybe like do that, <laughs> that kind of thing. And then if you are way back there reading over the stuff you've already written, that is kind of a great opportunity to add in some foreshadowing to the stuff that you know is coming because you've already written it now. Tip three, watch the things that inspired it in the first place. So if you're anything like me, the things that you write stem from the things that you love, whether this is a show, a movie, a book you've read, a genre you love, whatever like inspired you in the first place. If it's a place that you can go back to, like maybe you were at your favorite coffee shop and boom, like you had this idea for a novel, go back there, get a drink, get the same drink you got, you know, try to trigger those memories. If it's movies that like, helped <laughs> start your writing journey, go back and watch those. So like, for example, the book that I'm writing right now is inspired by like Casper, Scream, Titanic. It's got like all of these. <laughs> That's a very weird group of movies. I'm just realizing <laughs> to kind of just <laughs> put them all together. Yeah, they're all 90s movies. I don't know what that says about the project actually, that they're all 90s movies. It takes place in 2003. So there's that. But if I'm like really stuck, I'll go back and I'll watch one of those things or like Practical Magic is another one that has like the music especially has really good vibes. Additionally, if you have any like actors that you have fan cast in your roles, sometimes it helps to just watch stuff that they're in again or like interviews of them if they remind you of your character. Obviously, I don't think you should have your character be a one-to-one -one of that person. Um, it, they should be different whether it's in personality, change something about their looks. Having a playlist of songs really helps me. So specifically like Recensere, which I wrote in 2018, 2019. I, that whole playlist is like the Lord of the Rings soundtrack and the Hobbit soundtrack and 
all sorts of other stuff. The Peter Pan soundtrack from 2003. There's a lot of good, like, fantasy music in there. Compile all of the songs that remind you of your writing process and put them in a playlist. And then if you're stuck, you can, like, listen to it and, like, spark those emotions. Tip four. Explore the story in other ways. Uh, so specifically the way that I do this is I'll make all my characters in The Sims and just, like, play for a bit. <laughs> and is this my excuse to just use The Sims as part of my writing process? Yeah, probably. But um, I do think it helps, especially when I was writing O Positive. I was playing with the Vampires pack a lot, and that specifically like helped playing with the dynamics, having my two characters be roommates, and just kind of seeing how they cohabitated. And I don't think anything like specific sprung from that in the book, but it helped. It helped move me along. So do that. You know, maybe if you're writing a fantasy book, play some Skyrim, play another fantasy game. But also don't like procrastinate too hard. Like don't let that be an excuse to just play The Sims for eight hours and be like, I'm writing. It's a slippery slope is what I'm saying. <laughs> Tip number five, go back to the drawing board. So this is a plan that a lot of pansters run into. A pansster is someone who doesn't really have a plan and just kind of writes their books by the seat of their pants, hence pansster. I have tried to be a pansster and I wish I could be. I think the trade-off is people that pants their books have a longer editing process and people that plan their books have a slightly shorter editing process. That's all down to, you know, your personal process. Typically, if you have a plan going in, it helps me, at least, a lot just to, you know, have an idea of where I'm going. So if you don't have an outline at all and you're just really, really stuck and you have no idea what you're going to do next, I recommend you go back to the beginning you start making bullet points of everything that's happened so far and let that serve as your outline, even though you didn't have it to begin with. Like now you know everything that's happened, so you can go back and look at that. But then also like maybe brainstorm the next two or three bullet points. If, if you still want to like pants it and kind of like improv as you go, like maybe just think of the next two or three. You don't have to do the whole end of it. You can if you think that would help you, but just, just do the next two or three or finish the outline, you know, just get an idea of where you're going. It's never too late to go back and do that. Um, I know sometimes if you're like 40,000 words into a book and you're like, oh, I like literally don't know what I'm doing. Maybe this one just isn't meant to be. You can still save it. I don't always, it depends on the pro project. Sometimes I think it's worth it to try to save the first draft, but sometimes I think it's okay to just cut it loose and try again in a couple months, like whatever works for you. Tip six, be open to change. So this is kind of the opposite of the other point. This is for people that are like intense planners. You know, you have your very detailed outline. You know everything about your characters down to their eye color, birthday, zodiac chart. Like you know everything about them. Sometimes that can be a little trapping. You know what I mean? Like you are trapping yourself with all of these things that you think have to be. And I do that to myself too, where it's like, you know, I, I'm trying to write something and then I think about something I've previously written in the same story, like, oh, that contradicts. You are the person that wrote it, though. So you can go back and change that other thing and make it the way you want it to be in the present, you know what I mean? And so I get so stuck in this, oh, but I already wrote it the other way. <laughs> you can go back and change it, bestie. You're the author, you know? Um, and you don't have to do it in the first draft. That can be something that happens in the second draft. The second draft is the place for change. But if you're really stuck on the first draft and it's something that you have tied yourself to, just change it. Save a copy of the draft that you're working on save it somewhere so you don't lose that work if you do decide to change it back. And then in the copy of the draft, change whatever you want. <laughs> change whatever you want, play with it, ask the what if question. And just what if this happened? What if this character died? What if we introduced a new character? What if they go out for dinner? What if these two get together? What if those two get together? Like just kind of play with all of those options. Take what you like, get rid of what you don't, and then if you change something that you really loved the first time, you still have that previous draft. So you can move it over to the new draft or just go back to the old draft. Totally up to you. Tip seven, uh, give yourself permission to skip. So this is something I honestly have never done. I do 
write chronologically for the most part. Um, I write along my outline, I write everything in order. Sometimes that doesn't work for people though. Sometimes like you're really caught up on a scene, whether it's like an intimate scene or an action scene or a really sad like death scene and you just don't want to write it. You know it has to happen and you know what will happen when you do write it, but you just can't right now and that is what is holding you back from writing your book. It's okay to skip it. It's okay to just skip over that scene for now with the intention of going back to it later, write like a summary of what happens, put it in brackets, and write the next scene. And if that is what is holding you back, it's totally fine to just skip it and go back later when you're ready or, you know, try to rework your outline. If it's something that you really, really don't want to write, like maybe you shouldn't be writing it. And you can also write scenes early. There are tons of authors that write stuff out of order and they just, you know, they write the scenes they're really excited about first and then they go back and fill in the rest. And that's totally fine to do too. And then, you know, when you get to that scene, you can just edit it to match everything else you've written up to that point. Give non-chronological order a try. Personally, like I said, I haven't yet, but it could be something that helps you. Tip number eight. Give yourself permission to suck, especially during a first draft. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be done. And this goes for everything. This goes for screenplays, books, short stories, like whatever. It doesn't have to be good the first time around. You just have to finish it. Like, especially if it's NaNoWriMo, like you don't have time to go back and fix things and make them the best they can be. Like you can on your free time, but if you're doing like a writing session, you're trying to get to 50,000 words that month, you just have to keep moving forward. You have to keep writing things, keep putting one word after the other until you get to the end. And even if they're not good words, at least it is done. And at least you can recognize that and be able to change it in your f future drafts and make it something that is good. But at least if you have it done, you have something to work with. If you have nothing, you have nothing to work with. Give yourself permission to be bad. I've done that a lot with the book I'm writing right now. Like I'm writing something and I'm like, this dialogue is like kind of cringe, um, but I can fix it later and make sure you fix it later. <laughs> But uh, maybe like make a little note for yourself. Like I'll do like my main outline and then I have like a draft two notes section on my outline. And it's like, when I go back and do this again, I want to change this, this, and this, but I don't have time to for this draft or I don't want to like uproot the whole draft and do it again. Just like make notes for yourself for the next draft. That's totally fine. Um, you don't have to fix it right now. Just keep moving. Keep her moving. Finish, finish the book, bestie, please. Those are my tips for beating writer's block that you already have. These are my tips for preventing future writer's block. So tip number one, like I said, make an outline. It doesn't have to be in depth if you're a pantser. It can just be like bullet points, one sentence each. This should happen, then this should happen, then this should happen. And then you still give yourself a lot of room to play and like see how those things happen. And you can always change it as you're going. I've done that a lot. Like when I'm writing, I just changed the outline a little bit to fit what suits the story now that I've actually written part of it. So before I start writing a new writing project, I'll have like my essential characters planned out, the main character, the love interest, the best friend, etc, etc. I have names picked out for them and I have names picked out for maybe a couple of the places I know they'll go, but I don't have everything planned out. Um, I think it's important to let your characters grow as you're writing them, so maybe you discover their hobbies as you go along. Like my character right now, when I started writing, I did not have any idea for what she wanted to do with her future. Now I think I want to make her like an English professor, like at some point, like she, at her current point in life, she's not, she has just graduated undergrad. But I think, you know, maybe her new dream could be getting her master's, getting her PhD, becoming like a professor. I think that could be great for her. And I didn't know that going in. And so it's important to like at least have a plan, but it's totally okay to like let that plan change. Especially when I'm like naming characters, I get really stuck. Like if I have to name a character on the fly, it just helps me to have some names ready, even if I don't have anything like tied to them yet. Like, I don't know who this person's gonna be, but I think this sounds like a cool name. Those can be nice to have on hand too. Especially if you're writing a fantasy book, cause those are like hard to come up with on the spot. I end up using a lot of name generators and just, playing around with letters, like that kind of thing. But it's nice to have that kind of stuff prepared, just so you don't get stuck in that moment. Like, what do I name this elf prince? Like, you have a list. Tip number two, 
keep a notebook on you. It doesn't have to be a physical notebook, just something that you can take notes with. If this is the notes app on your phone, I do that a lot. Something that you're gonna have by your bed. Um, because for me specifically, I get a lot of ideas like as I'm drifting off to sleep, right as I'm waking up, in the middle of the night, like that kind of thing, or like dreams that I have that I think could make good books. The current, the book I'm writing right now is based on a dream. O Positive, which is published, is <laughs> based on like a rambling I did on my phone, in my phone notes. Um, at like 3 a.m. on one random night, I just typed out this whole outline and I <laughs> woke up the next morning thinking it was a dream and found out it was not. So, you know, keep something nearby that you can take notes on at all times, wherever you are, um, and just write down the ideas because I know you're gonna tell yourself, no, it's fine, I'll remember it later. It's a really good idea, I'm gonna remember it later. And you will not, I'm so sorry to break this to you. If you're anything like me, those ideas are gone the second you stop thinking about them. Sometimes the really, really good ones stick, but everything else kind of falls through the cracks unless I write it down somewhere. Tip three. Leave yourself some brackets. I do this at the end of a writing session if I know what I want to happen next. Um, I've grabbed an example of that. So that is what it looks like when I do it. And I just put it in brackets. So it says like, what's gonna happen? Who's doing what? Kind of more specific than the outline says. Cause on my outline, it's just like basic, like they don't find anything. But like in, in the brackets, it's like specific about what happens, what they're doing, what someone suggests next. And then it gives you like somewhere to push the snowball, you know, and get things flowing again as soon as you pick it up. This is also something I do um, if you can't think of anything in the moment and you don't have anything prepared and it's just really like sticking for you, put it in brackets. Just put it in brackets like, cool coffee shop name or character's mom's name, like that kind of thing. And then make sure you're doing like a find and replace when you do your editing. <laughs> or you'll find it like when you're going through to edit for the next draft. Just make sure at some point you go back and fill it in. You don't want that to end up in your final product. You should have at least someone else read over it. That's a separate video. Yeah, just leave yourself some brackets, put it there and then fill it in later and just keep moving. And this is my final tip. This is just for writing in general. Writing is a very personal process. It's different for every single person who does it. Writing tips are only good if they're going to help you. If anything I say in this video is like hindering your writing process, don't do it. Like do what works for you. If that's something on this list, if, if that's something completely different, if playing The Sims for eight hours like helps your writing process, do it. Do whatever you have to to keep your snowball rolling. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. It's like a tarot reading, you know? <laughs> that said, I ask you, what do you do to get things moving again when you have writer's block? Any of these things, something that's not on the list, let me know in the comments down below. That's gonna be it for this week's video. If you liked it, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you wanna see more. Sometimes I talk about writing, sometimes I talk about other things. It's just kinda whatever I'm feeling that week. As always, take your meds, drink your water, and I'll see you next week.